have made it cool to where uh, they don't write their songs, uh, they freestyle, or they refuse to let anyone help them. I um, see it as even if someone were to write me a song, I'm still going to dissect it and rewrite it in my ways. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I haven't actually had anyone give me a song and be like, here's your song. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't think people say cool shit. When people write shit for me and I look at it, I'm like, that shit sounds lame. Mm. I would never say that. Right. Uh, so I'm going to have to go, you know. But I think two, three heads, four heads are better than one. And the thing with the labels, um, I think that once you get to a certain point, you do need them. But I don't think. I used to think a label was the goal. Right. And now, then they would take everything. And, now when I see yeah. people, they're miserable. I see it on the Internet all the time. They're miserable. Like, why am I, why am I going to give up what I'm doing if I'm maintaining by myself right now. I've seen people who basically sign the labels and then that thing I'm describing of like trying to make something that'll really hit kind of sets in and then it seems like that pretty much is the end of their creativity as a rapper and like they just don't really it kills artists yeah it like actually like kills their soul and i don't think and like there's some rappers i can think of that they just never really get the swagger back after that yeah it's super sad there's an energy to your content when you're like recording in your room i think that i have a, um i think that I have my own genre. Like, I think that, like, it's rap, pop, like, rock star-ish. Like, like, there, you can't, you can't name it. You know what I'm saying? The boys are not going to mosh to it. The girls are going to be, like, you know, the girls are super lit. But when I look out and I'm performing, I see straight boys singing my lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to make something that appeals to everybody but I don't think I can be labeled as a certain... I think I'm one of one. Right. I truly think that. I mean, when we look at Meg, she's like the big success story of this year, and she's kind of got, like, similar to you, like, where you clearly care about being, like, respected as, like, an actual rapper and mm -hmm. making, like, music for rap fans, which is, I think, endears people to her that she, like, really gives a shit about rapping. I think Megan is really, really, really down to earth, and that's why she's grown like she has. Mm -hmm. I think that she's not trying to be in the headlines and mm. that's what put her in the headlines you know what i'm saying she's one of the ones that doesn't need to get into a fight mm. to be up there yeah i she think does. she's fabulous she avoids it actively the she does it in a way that's like curious like you know like the whiz video and stuff like that you were like huh mm. what is it what's going on but she never actually ever disrespects herself you have to respect megan like she demands it definitely i fuck with it as long as we're kind of touching that how'd you make Cole? Uh, actually, this is crazy. Speaking of Meg the Stallion, <laughs> uh, this is crazy. So I'm live in Dallas, and he was at a Chief Keef show, probably about oh boys two two or three years ago. Boys, they love their glow game. And uh, I I happened to pass him in the green room, and I asked him for a picture. And we, I know I so I literally never ask anyone for a picture like. Like, if Meg Thee Stallion was here, I would want a pick, but, like, I wouldn't ask her for a pick. I can't believe I asked him for a pick. But what kind of fan were you? You just thought that the channel was dope overall? Yeah, like, I mean, it was just Cole Bennett was there. That's, yeah. what, they, that's what they were saying. They're like, Cole Bennett. And like I told you, I was kind of, like, new on the music scene. I had just I had just did a song. Like, I just wanted to pick with him. Uh, probably on some clout shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, shit. But yeah. this was, like, two or three years ago, and... um. Well, two or three years ago. Okay, so it was a long ass time. Yeah, uh, and actually, once we crossed paths, we never saw or talked ever again. Uh, I dropped Trapper's Delight, and he commented under the video, next up. Wow. And I was like, next step. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. Uh, he is literally, like, so awesome. I wonder if he, did he remember that he had met you, though? Yes, he did. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I told him about it. And he also remembered, um... Uh, we, I flew to Chicago and played some music for him and um, the team. And I got to go to the space, like their little headquarters and stuff. Not the new one, though, right? I've been there. But oh, the new yeah, one, yeah. yeah but it, this was the old one. Right. And um, I want to see that new one. That basketball court. Oh, my sick. gosh. It's so <laughs> awesome. You don't understand. I told him he needs a water fountain uh, with lemonade. The lemonade right. coming down it. Because we're, we're like about to get our next studio space. So we're talking about like just put like a basketball hoop outside of shit and then I saw gold building that thing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's a lot to that's a lot to 
go with. But it's also indoor. You can keep it clean on a totally yeah. different level. We're not going to put wood flooring outside. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was like, fucking damn, the basketball court. That's so sick. That's so sick. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, the uh, His office, um, he has like stairs and like this little... I don't even want to spoil it. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, he needs the MTV Cribs thing going on. That there. is interesting that they haven't really unveiled that space officially yet. The studio is insane. Like music type studio yeah. or like recording interview type studio? No, it's a music studio. Oh, that's sick. It's too. called The Happy Place. Wow. That's badass. It's literally badass. So you just flew there to just show the music, but did you have any hunch that there was any kind of crush going on? No, there? no, no. Actually, uh, my management had set it up. Right. Uh, and I flew out there, and when I met him, um, I thought he was a great person. He actually cared to know. I, From what I understand, he wants to know an artist before he ever works with them or anything. Right. When he was talking to me, he genuinely cared to know where or what and all that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I left, and I didn't think anything would ever happen, and I don't. And we've talked about it. Neither did he. Right, because it's kind of a weird position for both of you if yeah. you like each other because yeah. – He's in sort of a weird position where he has so much power. It is a weird position. And you're in sort of a weird position because he's somebody that has so much power. Like, and that's, you know, how do you just relate to each other as regular people, you know? So that is what we try to do. We try to keep it as regular as possible. Mm. Um, and I mean as regular as possible. And that's how I like it. A lot of people ask why we haven't done anything or mixed business um, because we want it as regular as possible. Yeah. I enjoy it so much. I, like, when I was at Rolling Loud, I went to see Lil Baby performing. It was one of the only times I went in the crowd. And as he was performing, there was three or four couples right in front of me, and they were holding each other, and it would, they were so regular, and, like, I could have teared up. Actually, I did tear up, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Lil Baby. That's so cute. But it, but it was just so regular, and that's what I want. I don't never want what I see. As entertaining as it is on my phone, I don't want what I see on the timeline. Because there's just so many people now that get into a relationship, and it's basically like like you could tell when you see it happening, and you're like, holy shit, is this like, do you guys like each other? Or is this a weird cloud operation? I don't know what. And I also think that's another thing with labels, like oh, fake relationships and shit. You could never tell me. Have they me. brought that up to you? Who? The, or I guess you don't have a label or whatever, but have you like had anyone like so throw that out to you? Like people who are signed be like, oh, like we should fake date. I actually <laughs> heard that from somebody. I don't remember when or Lil who Lil Xan or claimed that the label set him up with Noah Cyrus like that. But then I also had the people from the label tell me that they were so mad about him lying about that that they kicked him off the label. Really? That's what they said. Well, whatever to stay in the headlines for them, I guess. I mean, I, I, it's weird because I wouldn't put it past them. Like, I, I wouldn't put crazy. it past any label. It can't, you can't put anything past anything. If I had an artist that I signed, I wouldn't put that past myself of things that I would recommend that they do. I'm not saying I respect it, but that shit works. Like, it shit works. Sometimes when you like just have an image as just like a dude, it's like people need to see you humanized. So they need to see you like relating to someone, even though a lot of times that shit feels fake as fuck. It's very true. Yeah. The shit feels fake, but people fucking eat it up. Yeah. That's what I would, like, I would tell a rapper any day. Like, go get a girlfriend. Get a girlfriend? People need to if see If a rapper you, gets like, a, a girlfriend, person. the other girls will flock. Interesting. That's weird, right? It is weird. The world's twisted. I don't have time for it. That's why I'm... Is that how it works for you that now that you have a boyfriend, actually, other video I think directors that... flock? <laughs> I actually think that everyone respects Cole so much. So right. my shit's dry, but I'm not on no Aisha Curry shit either. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like that shit don't bother me. Like, baby, I'm good. But was it ever a decision to like put it out there at all publicly? Because I remember the first time that you guys were just like chilling the story together and just saying to my girlfriend, like, Tay Money and Cole Bennett are dating? <laughs> what the fuck? That's crazy. Uh, I think that we were both like, I don't okay, so here's the thing. I don't ever he has he he's up there. He has a lot of power. Um and I respect everything about him in his life. I don't ever want him to feel uncomfortable or um I don't want him to ever feel bad about us because of what somebody else might say. Mm. So whatever we show to the world is it's just what we are like uh, we're not out here to I don't really know where I'm going with this. What I'm trying to say is... You're not putting it out there to entertain. I don't care if he shows me off. Right. But the fact that he does is lovable. Like, it's mm. a, a girl's line if she said she do, doesn't care. 
it, that's probably if, why it fucks with you is because there's so many girls that would be weird as fuck with it honestly i was terrified to take a picture with him i was mm. like what is he gonna think you know what i'm saying mm. like i was scared to post him i was like what what is he gonna think i didn't give a damn what the other people thought i was like i don't want him to think but we took it really we took it really slow and um the first time uh he ever posted me on his page some people said some things and i asked him you know just just take it down because i don't want him to feel any type of way i don't because his business is his it's his baby you know what i'm saying right. so i don't ever want to come and interfere with that at all right but we're very happy and um he treats me like a princess and that's adorable to yeah. witness thanks you know just as like once you've been in a relationship for a while, you start to look at other people's relationships and you're just like, nice. It's the only thing that I'm 100% certain about in my life. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, and, who knows? I could go back to doing hair. I won't, but I could. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. who knows what my life has been holding? But the rapper thing is like, it would be weird to turn your back on it now, don't you think? Yeah. So I'm already past like being. Point and ra- I, Like, yeah. I'm regular, but like. In a way, I'm not regular. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I'm already past, like, the. I'm, like, at the almost stage. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm. there is no turning back because then y'all going to say I didn't make it. But it could be because, you know, I didn't want to continue. But that's not going to happen. But is but your there's... mentality like I'm going out every fucking oh. day and working my ass off to make it right now? Or are you sort of more like I'm going to just be myself, let this happen in a way? I saw an interview one time of an artist that... It was actually Q Money. You know Q Money? Yeah. Uh, I loved his song called Work. Right. And I watched this thing and he said, it was a documentary or something about that. They were asking about it. He said, my life changed that day. He said, my day, ch- my life changed that day and I had no idea. And every time I shoot a music video and every time I put something out, I say, my life changes today because it could, it could go like, I feel I'm a superstar. I genuinely believe I'm a superstar. Right. And I feel like at any given time, I'm gone. Like, I'm going straight up. Right. That, I believe that. Because and you can see it in other people's careers. Like, you know, Meg, how long was Meg like a, a talented, cute she girl her, before a song hit and all of a sudden she's getting hundreds of thousands of likes on everything she does or whatever, you know? She built her, her fan base. And when she got that record and it went, it went. And it makes sense. It made sense because these artists get their one song, they came out of nowhere. Mm. There was no fan base. So they're kind of sizzling. You know what I'm saying? Really, the biggest thing that you're at risk for is getting too big too quick. That's what I'm talking about. People get too big before. But the Take Money Army is like crazy. Like, I love them so much. Really? I'm so thankful for them. Yeah. Like, I went into the mall in Dallas and I took like 20 pics one day and I thought that I was like, it wasn't like um, Britney Spears, bitch. It was like, wow, like, you know, that's cool. That shit made me feel amazing. Right. Well, you're in a position that's good, too, because the people that like you like you for you. Yeah. It's not like there's not hate mail yet. Like I was just interviewing a dude that was on Rhythm and Flow, the reality show. And he was just like, you know, he's like, yeah, I I got like 300,000 followers from that show. They don't really listen to my music when I put something new out. Mm-hmm. It's like you went on the show and got a lot more fans, fans technically, but it's like you can have a fan that's going to listen to every song you put out 10 times or you can have a fan that's going to like look at your Instagram photo and not engage with it in any way. There's like many different types of fans. So on Instagram, I don't have my likes. So I can't see anybody else's likes or mm. views or anything like that. And I actually like that a right. lot, but I can still – and I – used to could really tell when people's fans weren't real oh, yeah. and that is such a not like i'm should attracted to them but it's such a turnoff as like to like you as an artist you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying it's like you're lame as fuck but I, sometimes i can't tell if they're just have like fake followers or if they just fell off like that too because <laughs> sometimes you're looking at a girl's instagram and you're like like do you get bad engagement because you bought followers or do you get bad engagement because a lot of people followed you and then decided that you were uninteresting. And I think that the second scenario is almost as bad as the first. Yeah. So pretty much you're in the same fucking bucket. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah. Like you're just either, you either faked it or you're genuinely unpopular now, Basically, but people already gave you a shot and decided they weren't really into it. That's, that's kind of scary. Nojumper.com. Like, comment, subscribe. If you guys enjoyed this video, I want one of these, you know where to go.
then no German Facebook too. Link is down in the description. Some good stuff going on over there. Appreciate y'all watching this.